Hey, how are you? Lisa Marie Grantham here, and today I'm talking about how to take care of your altar. I mean, nobody likes a tired altar, right? We want them to be really beautiful and fresh and energized so that we can live our sacred and magical life. So I have a four-step process. Uh, you know, I have altars all around, all around the house and in my office, outside, you know, and I go deeply into that in other articles that I've written on goddesslifestyleplan.com and you can check them out there. But for today, I really wanted to address how to take care of an altar. You know, it seems it seems like it would be something simple and intuitive, but there are kind of guidelines. So I wanted to kind of, you know, present them to you. Okay, so four step process. One, make sure you keep your altar dusted and ashes cleaned up. If you're anything like me, you always have a candle burning, <laughs> you know, back there, you always have incense going, uh, you know, so those things create soot and ash. So just a quick cleanup every day or every other day, keeping things nice and tidy on your altar and ash free, so to speak, is, is a really great practice. Um, number two, you want to be uh, thinking about replacing or removing, if you don't have a replacement of any wilted uh, flowers, things that are dying on the altar. Remember, your altar is your power portal. It's like your, your place for calling in um, divine power. So you want to keep everything really beautiful and alive on there. So if you're anything like me, you've bought you know, beautiful bouquets of flowers in the past, you've put them on your altar in your sacred space, and in the, in the next few days you see like one flower is wilting over, another one's not looking so good, but the bouquet in general looks pretty good. So I like to go in there and kind of pluck out the individual flowers or foliage that is not doing well in the bouquet and just leave really vibrant, beautiful, alive kind of looking flowers on my altar space. Uh, another thing to keep in mind, you know, it doesn't always have to be flowers, ladies. You can definitely use herbs. And when you're in your growing season, um, wherever you live in the world, you know, you've got herbs probably growing outside, uh, if you're anything like me, right? Nature lover, gardener. And um, you want to be thinking, like, how can I use these herbs on my altar space so many of them are very aromatic, especially like what comes to mind is rosemary or basil, lavender. These are beautiful additions for your altar. But the same, the same rule applies like when it's looking tired, you know, just swap it out. But think outside the box. It doesn't always have to be flowers, foliage, uh, herbs, uh, leaves, whatever feels good to you and whatever makes sense Um to you in the moment, right? You get that intuitive hit. Well, work, go with it. Roll with it. Um, number three, if you're working with the uh, an element, uh, all the elements. Oh, I have like 7,000 thoughts, one mouth. I always say that. If you're working with the elements on your altar, which I highly suggest, you really want to have a representation of air, fire, water, earth, and of course, spirit. So many times on the altar, you would have something like a chalice or a bowl. So you want to make sure you replenish the water that's in your bowl or chalice to kind of just give it a little bit more oomph back into it. Keep everything fresh and energized. And number four, if you have photos or um, uh, sometimes uh, oracle cards, I've seen some of my students use oracle cards, a representation of a deity they're working with, an angel they're working with or you could be using statues. Now, statues on your altar are really great to call in that energy. So something like this, it looks uh, to me like Gaia, maybe holding holding Mama Earth or a mother holding Earth. So this is a great representation of the goddess for me, the, the divine feminine aspect of deity. And another example, which I don't recommend you run out and, and do right away if you're new to magical living, is this is the Morrigan. And uh, this is a Celtic goddess. She's a dark goddess. And you could see by her expression, she definitely means business. So you could be using statues like that. Although, like I said, I don't think that's a beginner deity to be working with uh, the Morgan. You want to kind of get uh, to be working with more, I think, um, what's the word I'm looking for? more forgiving uh, energy, uh, like maybe Mother Mary or Quan Yin. I, I always love to work with that uh, that archetype of uh, the Divine Feminine when I'm uh, doing most of my magical work, just stay in that really loving, uh, forgiving, compassionate space. 
But every goddess, she has her role, right? And we need all of them. But with your photos and your statues, like swap them out. Like, what are you working on? What are you looking to call in? What is the intention of your altar? Make sure all the things on your altar really are working with the intention you have for that altar. And if it's feeling a little stale, freshen it up. Me personally, I change my altars as needed. Like I all of a sudden feel like mm, that's feeling a little dull or a little flat. So I'm feeling inspired to really refresh this altar, change it up, put new things on there, whether it's uh, you know a feather or new gemstones on my altar space, right? Whatever I want to work on, I want my altar to support that intention. So be thinking like that. And also a really good rule of thumb for me is to definitely refresh your altars at, at, at each of the uh, change of uh, the seasons. And also another idea would be each Sabbath. So I follow the wheel of the year and those are like nature's holidays, so to speak. And there are eight throughout the year. So I am always refreshing my altar, something seasonal. I always have a workhorse, workhorse altar, but then I also have seasonal altars sprinkled around. So I will change out those altars uh, every every Sabbath, uh, and that's about every six weeks or so throughout uh, throughout the calendar year. Another idea is new moon. Refresh your altars at new moon to be in alignment with the intention that you want to work on that lunar cycle. So really fun stuff, right? So I hope this um, this helped and it gave you some really practical information on how to simply and practically and no nonsense take care of your altar spaces. Okay, so until next time, I'll see you. Bye.